In this video, we are going to look at an example of an application load balancer. So currently I have two servers, one is web server 01 and web server 02. And basically it has HTTPD installed on it and they're serving like static pages like this is serving, server one is serving, this is the index page. And then you have this app slash customer dot HTML which is just showing that this is the customer page of server one. It's just a static HTML. And similarly, we have the server two, which is showing this is the customer page of server two at app slash customer dot HTML. And at the index location, it's showing this is index page of server two. So now for creating op application load balancer, first of all, you need target group. So inside your EC2 console, you'll have to select target groups and then create target group and then target group name. So you're just gonna call it target group one, TG1. The protocol is HTTP, the other options are HTTPS, TCP. So we're gonna select HTTP and port 80. Target type is instance. So basically we are going to create a target group of instances. You can also select an IP address over here, but we're gonna just select instance and the VPC. And there are the health check settings where it will look for slash at the index page it will look for whether the index page is up or not on this path or basically this path is available or not in our case it will be an index page so advanced health check settings this is important to remember the healthy threshold is five so it will check for five health checks for it to consider it as a healthy endpoint so number of five, number of consecutive health checks required before considering an unhealthy target healthy. Unhealthy threshold similarly is two. So it will wait for two consecutive health checks to declare a target as unhealthy if the health check fails. And then the timeout, it doesn't re re receive the response in five seconds. It will, it will mean that the health check has failed. So if it's trying to query a health check and there's a timeout, it will wait for five seconds or it will, after five seconds, it will deem that health check uh, evaluation has failed. And the interval. So the amount of time between each health check. And in our case, it's 30 seconds. We're gonna just reduce it to 10 seconds. So it's much quicker. And the success score is 200 for the health check. So these are all the health check settings over here. So here, this slash is just for the health check. It doesn't mean uh, load balancer is gonna restrict any traffic to the instances. So anything on port 80 will be forwarded. And these are just the health check related settings. So I'm gonna click on create. So once that's done, now we are going to create a load balancer. So we'll click on load balancer, create load balancer, and here it will give you different options. And we're gonna select the application load balancer. And the name, so I'm gonna create ALB. So it's internet facing or it's, an, or it's an internal load balancer. So in our case, it's an internal facing load balancer. So it's listening on port 80. And then the availability zone, so where will your instances be available? So I'm just gonna select all availability zones. In our case, it might just be two instances, so we could have just selected the availability zones for those two instances. But we're gonna select all so that our targets are in those availability zones. We're not gonna tag it security group. We're not gonna use any HTTPS ports. For security groups, I'm gonna select the same as the one for our web servers. And then click on configure routing. So over here, it is asking us to select a target group. So I'm gonna select an existing target group, the one we have created. And the health check settings will be copied over from the target group. Target type is instance, and the port is 80. So this is the port that the load balancer will use when routing traffic to the targets in this target group. And then click on register target. So there are no instances because we have never registered instances in our target. We did create target group, but we never registered them. 
so what I'm going to do is click on review and click on create so now I'm going to go back to our target groups click on targets so we have to add targets so I'm going to click on edit I'm going to select our both the instances and over here click on add to register don't forget to click on add to register if you directly click save it will not be registered the instances will not be registered so I'm going to click on save so it's right now it's initial but after a while the status will change target registration is in progress You could have created the target group first, add instances to it and then created the load balancer or you could have gone for this approach as well. So now our targets are healthy. I'm going to go back to load balancers, copy the DNS name and then invoke that. And then now you can see that it's going to the load balancer is invoking the index page of server 2 so I can refresh so now it's showing the index page of server 1 we also had different URLs right we had this app slash customer.html so this is the customer page of server 2 so I'm going to refresh it so now it's customer page of server 1 now application load balancers also allow path based routing so if you want to say that anything that has slash app in it should only go to my instance too. So if the load balancer encounters a request that has slash app in it, it will only go to instance two. If that's what you want, you can have that as well. So we're going to look at that. So depending on that, you can have different instances and then you can have different routes where slash app will go to instance two uh, slash um customer orders will go to instance that are ordering related customer login will go to instances that are login related so you can have this path based routing in your application load balancer so let's set set that up so i'm going to go to target groups and create another target group i'm going to call it tg2 instances everything remains the same i'm going to just reduce the interval to 10 seconds so we don't have to wait much and then I'm going to click on create. So now we have target group two. So in the targets, I'm going to just add web server two and then click on edge to register and then click on save. So we have our target two created, which only has web server one. Our target one has both web server one and two. I'm going to go back to load balancers and go to listeners. And over here, I'm going to view edit rules so all the requests are right now directed to target one so I'm going to click on this add button insert rule add condition if the path is slash app slash star so anything with slash app and I'm going to click on add action forward to target group two click save so now we have two rules Anything with slash app will go to target two. All other requests will go to target one. So now let's see if that works. So I'm back to my uh, load balancer. So this, now if I refresh, it should go to target two. So it will show, let's see. So now it's showing customer page of target two. Keep on refreshing, it won't go to target one. But if I remove this, so the default should go to both the servers so now it's going to one and two in a round robin almost like a round robin fashion so that's how you use your application load balancer and then you have your first you create your target groups and then you create a load balancer assign those target groups to the load balancer then you can configure the listener and the paths over here and the health check settings which are important to know and understand so this is how you configure a application load balancer